Hello again, everyone. Uh, glad, glad you're here. Glad you're here. And uh, today we begin a brand new series on shakeable joy. Does it feel like the, the, the going is tough? Does it feel like we are up a creek? It just, it, it just when it feels like, man, things are just maybe coming back to normal after a hard year. Of all the implications of COVID, now all of a sudden look at what's happening around us. Uh, things are not stabilizing. In some cases, they get worse. You turn on your TV and uh, around the world, uh, there are struggles going on, difficulties going on, crisis after the other going on. Uh, and and I want to do in the next four weeks or so in this series uh, on shake-up draw. It's, um, I, I, my goal is to kind of recharge you. I, I, I sort of want to attach... Uh, battery cables and rev you up for the next four weeks or so. How about that? I want you to get to a place where, where you are a little bit more calmer and less tense, less anxious, regardless of what's going on around. I want to invite you to come to Favor Life Spiritual Spa and get relaxed, get refreshed, get encouraged, get uplifted. And allow God and his Holy Spirit to do what he does best. To feed our hearts and to pump us up and to give us encouragement on the inside so that we can withstand the pressures on the outside. And so this is what this series is all about. Unshakable joy, radical joy. And in the next four weeks or so, I want us to receive what the Bible calls the joy of of the Lord is our strength. Say that with me. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, if there is one word that is supposed to describe the Christian life, it's the word joy. Say that with me. It's what? Joy. And we see that all through the, the pages of scripture. And it began at Christmas time. At the coming of the, the, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The, the thing that the angel said is this. It says, behold, I bring you good news of great what? Joy. That the coming of Jesus for believers is the entrance of the joy of the Lord for our life. And joy is, is to characterize our lives as we follow Jesus Christ. And all through Jesus' ministry, we can see this joy characterization. Everywhere he went, Jesus healed people. And the next refrain, the next note in the Bible is that the people were filled with joy. You see that all through the Gospels. Where Jesus comes on the scene, heals the sick, the people. What is noted is we're filled with joy. When Jesus sent out the disciples, the 72 in Luke 10, the Bible says they returned with joy. 10 verse 17, it says the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us. At the resurrection on that first Easter morning, it's the disciples and the women who were following Jesus were what? Filled with joy. And when the first church was birthed in Jerusalem at the, uh, uh, the ascension of Jesus, the first Christian group is that they worshipped with great joy. Paul in the New Testament says, he says, whenever I pray for you, I pray with great joy. So you see all the pages of the scripture, one thing that notates People of God is joy, is joy, is joy. In fact, the Bible says in Luke 15 that the very time a person steps across the line spiritually and puts their faith in Jesus, what happens is that there is joy in heaven. It says there is joy in heaven when one sinner turns from their sins and turns to God. There's a party in heaven. There was a party in heaven when you gave your life to Christ and every time anybody does that, there is joy in heaven. And that's what God wants us to experience in the midst of COVID, hardships, uncertainty, difficulties, challenges, the, the, the future being unknown. God wants you to have his joy to be able to walk through life's twist and turn. You see, a lot of people think that following Christ is all about rules and regulations. 
It's all about rituals and, and things like that. But actually, following Christ is all about joy. That's what the Bible says the kingdom of God is about. Look at the first portion of scripture in your sermon outline up on the screen. Romans 14, 17. Let's look at that together. Romans 14, 17. It says what? The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of what? Righteousness, peace, aha, uh -huh, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And this, what God is saying is this, that the deeper roots you built into Christ, the more joy you're going to have in your life. The kingdom of God is about joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not about what goes on on the outside, what you see on the news, what you are concerned or afraid of might or might not happen, but it's all internal. It's all experiential. What you experience on the inside and you being a child of God, living in the kingdom of God, God is saying your life should be characterized by what? Joy on the inside. Joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the difference maker. This is what ought to mark us apart from unbelievers. You say, what's the real, what's the big deal between a believer and an unbeliever? And this is one of them, the joy, the joy of the Lord. Because when you look around you, people aren't ex en enjoying life. They are enduring life. You look at movies and most of the people in the TV shows, they are not joyful people. They are depressed people. They are sad people. They are cynical people. They are just going through motions in life. But God says here, for my children, here's what ought to mark your life. The kingdom of God is about joy in the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit, as you dwell in my spirit, the spirit of Jesus living in you, it will produce joy in your heart and your mind in spite of what's going on on the outside so that you can live that confident, victorious, fulfilled life. Look at what Paul says in Philippians 1.25. Philippians 1.25, Paul speaking. He says what? I will continue with you so that, watch this, you will grow and experience what? The joy of your faith. And it's saying that the more you grow in Christ and the deeper your roots get into him, what happens in your life is you will experience the joy of your faith. That your faith in Christ, your belief in Christ, your following Christ, your fellowship with Christ. He says, the more you draw closer to God, it will produce in you. You will grow and experience the joy of your faith. Amen. What an amazing scripture for us to hold on to and to receive this joy. And so, when I don't have joy in my life, it means that at that point, I'm living a shallow relationship with Christ. Because the deeper my relationship with the Lord, the deeper my joy will be. You grow and experience the joy of your faith. So, in this series, my brother and my sister, what does it mean for us to experience unshakable joy? What does it mean for us to live this radical, unshakable joy lifestyle? My brother, my sister, it is this. To be radically joyful, to have unshakable joy, it means to be joyful all the time. Say that with me. It means what? To be what? Joyful all the time. It doesn't matter whether you are sick or well, have money or don't have money, whether you are, you are loved or not loved, whether you are single or, or you are married. It doesn't matter whether you have a job or your job. It doesn't matter. To experience this joy of the Lord, the kingdom of God, is about joy in the Holy Ghost, is to me to be joyful in all time. It's to be joyful in all times. And he's not talking about the kind of happiness or excitement that you have when things are going well. That's not what he's talking about. Anybody can be happy when things are going great. But unshakable joy, unshakable joy, is what Paul talks about in Philippians 4.4. 4. Look at this next portion of scripture, Philippians 4.4. 4. He says this, always, always be what? Full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Not the word always. Unshakable joy is the joy that you have 
always, all the time, whether you're sick, whether you are well, whether you're broke, whether you are mad, whether you're frustrated, whether things around you is good or not good, it doesn't matter. And always, always, always situation. Always be full of joy. That is radical, unshakable joy. And that's what the next month or so, I want us to walk through this journey of understanding, receiving, applying, and experiencing unshakable joy. How often? Always. And you ask the question, how is it possible to always be joyful? In spite of all the things that are happening in our life, how can we be full of joy? Always be full of joy, I say always. How can that happen? And the key, the key is in that portion of scripture. Put it up again. The key is in, in, in that phrase, in the Lord, in the Lord. Look, look back at, at Philippians 4.4. 4. He says what? Always be full of joy in the Lord, right? It is in the Lord do we have unshakable joy. It is in the Lord that no matter what's happening on the outside, do we experience this radical joy. Oh, that drives us. Oh, keep us going even in difficult times. In the Lord. Always be joyful in the Lord. Now, the Apostle Paul, this phrase, in the Lord, is Paul's favorite description of what it means to follow Jesus. As a matter of fact, 167 times in the New Testament, we see the word in the Lord or in Christ. In fact, the word Christian is only used a couple of times in the Bible. But where the reference is made of Christians, it is used 167 times in the Lord, in the Lord, or in Christ. And over and over again in your Bible, if you ever do a study, every time the Bible says in Christ, it's going to show you a benefit. Those that are in Christ will receive this. Those that are in the Lord will have this. This is what happens when you are in the Lord. It's a reference of Christians. Christians are those who are what? In the Lord. It says you will always be joyful when you are what? In the Lord. And this is the key benefits, my brother, my sister, of being in, in Christ, of putting your faith in Christ, of loving Christ, of being part of God's family, of being part of what Christ meant for us to be, that you will rejoice in the Lord always. I say unto you, and you'll be full of joy in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord it doesn't say rejoice in your circumstances. It says rejoice in the Lord. It doesn't say rejoice because of your car or your home or your health or your job or your bank account. It doesn't say rejoice because of anything you have on the outside, anything materialistic. It says rejoice. Because you could have all those things and still not have joy in your life. Do you believe that? Your joy will come from that experience of being in Christ. And in this last year that we've come through and it's not over yet, where we've had hardships and difficulties, where it's been a very tough year. God is saying that no matter what is going on on the outside, no matter what we turn our news and we see, no matter what we are personally experiencing, we can still rejoice. How? In the Lord. We can rejoice in the Lord in spite of what you're going through. And that's what for the next four weeks or so I want to spend some time unpacking, digging into it so that you and I can have this joy in the Lord. Joy comes from the inside. Joy comes as an outburst of what God has placed in your life so that you can present it to life. You have something to be able to show forth. And push back against negativity, against hurt, against harm, against worry, against anxiety, against fear, against challenges, against everything that box your mind. You've got something, an equipment, a resource from God to be able to confront what is pushing back against you. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. 